Good morning, everyone, and welcome to 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on Saturday. Um, two days ago, we actually did get a call from the repair guy um, who apologized for not coming out on Monday. Uh, he said that he had guests in town and that it just completely slipped his mind. And we said, totally cool. You know, we're we're here. You know, we work from home. So, like, if you, if you have to change anything, just, you know, try and let us know. So, he said that he would be out uh, Saturday morning um, sometime after 10 a.m. So, we got up to make sure it would be up for whenever he comes to look at this. And as a reminder, there's nothing wrong like on the inside with the AC. Um, it still works fine, but I can hear it short cycling uh, anytime I spend, let's say, a length of time in that bathroom. Because when I'm in that bathroom, I'm close to the outside unit and I can hear it um, you know, off on, off on, off on, off on, uh, over and over and over again. So. I'm hoping that maybe he'll be able to take a look at it and I don't know, make sure it's okay. I mean, clearly it's not okay, right? Like yeah, something's okay. wrong with it if it's doing that. Hopefully he'll be able to figure it out. I've, I looked online and there can be a lot of reasons. So I'm hoping that he'll be able to figure it out. There's also some other little things in here, like the outlets from when we first, first got here. Um, you know, the... That one's loose and that one's loose and maybe he could look at that while he's here also. I don't know. Otherwise, uh, as a reminder, we're going to be cleaning the rest of the loft uh, today and um, then the entire upstairs will be done. Then we can start moving all of the equipment up there and uh, just more or less f start finalizing upstairs, which I am ecstatic about. I like put a lot of stuff down here by doing that too, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of boxes that have just been existing on the floor down here. And uh, there hasn't really been anywhere to take it. Um, a lot of the stuff is waiting for us to put up the bookshelves. That's what the big thing is. Like, this this room is just, like, full of stuff. And um, most of it's games. And it all kind of has to wait until we have the bookshelves up. But, you know, we have a, we have a vision... Uh, for what we want to do. We're just slowly but surely working our way there. So a little time later and um, the repair guy was here. Uh, the AC is fine and we learned a lot about the AC, yeah. which was helpful. And uh, we also had him look at those loose uh, outlets and he said that they're fine and he tightened them up and everything's fixed. So a few things. First off, um, the repair guy was super, super nice. It wasn't the guy that was here before and I think I learned a little bit about why. So the person that was out here before, I believe is the repairman for the rental company. That's the guy that comes whenever there's a problem that he needs to come out for. I don't know what it is. So that's the guy that was here a long, long time ago when they flushed the line, the condensation line to get the AC working again. That was a few weeks ago. This guy is the personal repairman of the owner of the house who is going to be basically our repairman now. Yeah. So what happens is if we have a problem, apparently how this works is we reach out to our landlord who is in charge of our house for the rental company. That person then has to reach out to the owner of the house. And then the owner of the house has to reach out to their repairman who comes over and deals with stuff. So the repair guy was here and he's like, you know, you have my number. He's like, if there's a problem, he's like, just contact me directly because otherwise there's so many hoops that have to get jumped through. He's like, it's kind of crazy. He said, just, just let me know. So, um, super, super nice guy really enjoyed getting a chance to meet him. And also he was extremely thorough in checking everything outside, everything in the attic, making sure everything was fine. Um, I think he probably felt a little bit bad because he had told us today and he had missed yeah. it. And he apologized for that again, but um, he checked everything. And the way that he explained it is 
One of the things I was so excited for, which I had said that there's two thermostats and they operate independently, because uh, there was that first night that we stayed here and we had made the upstairs cold, but when I had come downstairs, it was warm. So that apparently is called uh, zoning. And there's actually just one AC unit. The, the better way to do it apparently is to do two AC units where they're controlled independently. That's not what's happening. There's just one unit and there's like a computer that kind of dictates what's going on. The problem is if you have very different temperatures that's harder on the system combined with the fact that Raleigh has been experiencing some of the hottest days ever recorded, it's making the system chug basically. So he advised first off to not worry about the sound because everything is fine. Everything looks fine. He said on super hot days, that's just something that's probably going to happen. But then he also advised that we try to keep the upstairs and the downstairs within like a two, two degree difference. So if we're putting it, you know, at one temperature, when we go to bed, we should probably keep the downstairs similar. Um, so on the one hand, that does remove the excitement of like, oh, they, they can be different temperatures. It won't be freezing when we go downstairs in the morning. Yeah, but unfortunately that's not really how it works because there's not two different units doing it. It's one unit and apparently that is very difficult for the unit to, to do. So I learned a lot and mostly I'm excited to know that everything is okay. And we also, like we don't know anything about the owner of the house, because whenever you rent something from a rental company, they're the mediator between the tenant and the, the person that owns the, the owner of the house. So since this guy was the personal repairman for the guy, um, you know, we actually got a chance to, to hear a little bit about the owner. He said he was a super good guy. And I was like, okay, well, cool. We'll probably, probably never meet him, but, <laughs> but that's good. So uh, he also said, yeah, he said, if we ever move, you know, somewhere in the area to let him know and he could be our repairman too. So it was, it was nice. He was, he was a good guy. So it took a while to get to that point, but um, I'm glad that we got a chance to meet him make and sure wrong. make sure there's nothing wrong. And we have his number and now we can just, if there's something, if there's an issue or something, we can let him know. But actually everything now I think is fine, right? Like we're good. There's no pressing issues. Landlord said there was going to be a locksmith for the back garage door key. Oh yeah, but yeah. That, that the but that's that's asked, not that's not him. So no, that's not him. Yeah. We asked him about the fireplace because yeah. it doesn't work. It does a click like a gas stove would do when it's trying to light. Um, so it's either it's something broken or the gas company didn't turn on the gas. And he said, "Wait till it's like October." Yeah, and uh, I don't know. We might actually double check with the rental place and, and find out if we even need to have the gas turned on. It was in our lease, but like if we can not have, cause we went ahead and turned it on, but I was not aware that there's a service fee and the service fee I think is like a, 10 to 12. Yeah. It's like $11 a month, month, which is insane. The, the fact that you have to pay $11 a month to not use it is insane. That's insane. So, um, I don't even need a fireplace. I've never used a fireplace. And like, are there moments in the winter that it would be somewhat nice to have? I guess, but I could also just not use one like I've always done because if it's gonna cost me $132 a year to just have it, that's absurd. So um, I'm gonna talk to them to see if we can, if it's imperative that we even have it. And if not, I'm gonna get it shut off because I don't even want it. And to have to, to pay that for the privilege of being able to turn it on is ludicrous. It's actually ludicrous. And um, sometimes you can put a hold on things like that. Yeah, um, I don't know. We'll we'll look into what other options are because I don't even I don't even want it. We live in Raleigh. It was 115 degrees. I don't need a fireplace. So we decided to head out and get a little bit of lunch and uh, Mao had found this place called Bee Bon Me. It's a local spot and they have, as you would expect, Bon Mi's. Uh, there's actually a lunch special, which was a wildly good deal. You got the whole Bon Mi and a side of fries and also a bubble tea 
for $9.99, which seemed like a pretty good deal to me. Uh, everything was absolutely delicious. Um, nice little spot in there. And uh, I am glad you found that place. Thanks. I got a fruit smoothie. It's mango. Yeah. And like, you know how raw mango has like a bite to it? Kind of like pineapple, but not as strong. Yeah. It definitely has that. So it's like fresh fruit. It's not too sweet, not syrupy. It's really fresh and good. Nice. So. Yeah, I had, uh, I had caught, I don't, again, <clears throat> I don't order a lot of bubble tea, but since it was part of the lunch special, I was like, sure. And I got coffee and it was, it was good. It was good. Cool. I gotta remember that place. So one of the things that we decided to do um, after getting some lunch is come over here and check out Limited Run. I think I said it before on video, but like our new local game store is the Limited Run retail store, which is, I'm gonna be honest, a really cool <laughs> local game store to have. Um, it's also nice because uh, we still have access to Player's Choice in Myrtle Beach anytime we go back there. So. In my opinion, the, our two home game stores are basically some of the better ones to have. Limited Run is nice because if there's a new Limited Run game coming out, they have them in the store, and then you can go get it without having to pay shipping. So we got a few things. Um, they had a, a Wii U game that we were missing. They had a PlayStation 1 game that Mao was interested in, in, in trying out. Um, one of the things that's kind of surprising to me is that they have a pretty well-stocked uh, used. used game yeah. section, and the prices are really reasonable. You wouldn't expect that, I think. Um, I mean, video games are expensive now, right? And uh, I, I really felt like the prices were reasonable, and that's surprising, I guess. So if you are in the area, if you're in Raleigh, you should probably check out uh, Limited Run because they have a physical store where you can buy their games. I could have done I could have done a much better job of filming, but also I was, you know, I was shopping and we will definitely be back. Also got a chance to talk to some folks in there, which is really nice, the employees. And I turned the car on because it's hot. When we were walking up to the store, I told Mal, I said, you know that if we're going to run into someone in Raleigh, it's probably going to be in this store. And Mal was like, probably. And then we had been in the store for about five or ten minutes, and someone said, Hey, are you Steven? And uh, we got to meet uh, someone who uh, said they used to watch the, the vlogs. So, uh, Jesse, if you are seeing this, hey, it was nice to meet you. Um, we always love running into folks, and, and if we're going to run into somebody, it tends to be in video game stores. So, of course, it would also happen today. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, neat. Uh, at some point we'll be back because uh, I missed the pre-order window for Cat Lateral Damage. And I want to pick it up once it's in the store um, because Sagan and Kepper are in it. And I, I really want a physical copy of that because, I don't know, there's something fun and unique about having a game and being like, my cats are in this game. So uh, we'll be back to pick that up at some point once once they've got some of the copies in the store. sitting on the couch and I looked out outside and I was like, oh my god, it's golden hour. It looks really nice. It's 8.30 p.m. It's pretty bright. There's also a little friend out there. There were three of them a second ago. Yeah. I had to, I had to change the, the color on the camera because it was trying to auto fix it. And I was like, no, no, don't fix it. <laughs> this is exactly what it looks like outside. It's cool. All right, now back to auto. Yeah, this is <laughs> what you're seeing now is not what it looks like outside. It's very yellow. Um, so anyway, uh, we were actually out quite a, a bit today. Um, we also went to the mall. Um, a mall. Well, yeah, a mall, right? So, so there's actually a few malls um, in, in, in Raleigh. And it's very weird because we went to... Crabtree Valley, is that what it's called? I think, so. I think it's called Crabtree Valley. That mall was bumping. 
like we had a hard time finding a parking spot and it's so strange to go to an American indoor mall and it be alive. <laughs> Every mall I go to is like, oh, you know, it's, there's not a lot going on. So to visit a mall that is that busy, it was crazy. Um, it was just really interesting. I was like, oh, wow, you know, the malls are alive. Well, there was, there were tons of stores and there was a crap load of people, possibly the most people I've seen in any place in a long time. Um, and it was just really interesting because when I think of a mall now, I th I'm like, oh, the place where, you know, nothing is, but there are, there are smalls still, you know, in existence. Now I went to Lush, Lush, is that what yeah. it's called? To get some bath bombs. I wanted to try them because I've never tried them. I never had a, like a real bath tub till now. Yeah. So I got, <laughs> is this for Kepi? I got this one. Kepi. It's for Kepi. Is it Kepi? Is it for Kepi? You what? didn't think you'd like this that. This is not for <laughs> Kepi. <laughs> oh, Kepi. This was not for Kepi. Why? <laughs> I mean, you wanted to smell it. Um, yeah, so we we haven't had access to a tub, really, Yeah. Um, in a long time, and we actually have a tub. I don't have any interest in tubs because even... <laughs> it's not for Steven! No, it's not for Steven! Uh, I, I, I've never really gotten a lot of uh, value out of a tub because even... Uh, even the largest tubs generally don't fit me very well. Um, I mean, if it's a real, real, real big tub, then maybe. But uh, the one that we have is not really Steven-sized. Um, but Mao has already had a chance to take a bath, and she really enjoyed it. And she's really looking forward to using that as a place of relaxation while we live here. So she wanted to get a bath bomb to try that out. So good. Yeah. Well, I guess that just means we'll need a bigger tub someday. I'm not really a, t I mean, maybe I'm a tub guy and I don't know it, but I don't think I'm a tub guy. I get in the shower and I do enjoy the relaxation portion. Like the idea yeah. of just like, it's a, it's very much a, like a creative place for me. It's a, it's a lot of times where I, I come up with like new ideas and stuff, but I don't know that I really want to soak. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, who can say? Wait, so... Because we want a two degree difference, we need to bring the air down, down here too. Uh-huh. Okay, got it. Brought the air down, downstairs also. So the, the last thing that we did for today, which was kind of like the overarching thing that we've been trying to accomplish, is the entire upstairs is clean. All the floors are completely clean. They've been cleaned twice maybe even thrice now yeah i would call that three times oh uh, yeah i would i'd say th i'd say three times. times and as a result um it's no longer giving us any uh any trouble with uh our feet having any stuff on it so there's the, the my, our feet aren't coming back black mal's test is that she would um put socks on and then just kind of sc scooch around the floor and see if there was uh yeah, shuffle around and see if there was any, you know. My socks got dirty. Yeah, and they haven't been, so. You need to close this door, because we're done. Oh, shoot. What? I forgot to grab the other mop head. Oh, but um, yeah, so the entire upstairs is done, the stairs are done, and the good thing about that is that for one, it's good. And then the second thing is that I can finally set up the loft set up the loft. I have all the networking stuff to set up the internet throughout the house the way that we're intending to do it so I can actually do all that stuff now. And I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm just exhausted. I need a shower and then I need to go to bed. It's been a long day. It's been a fun day, but it's been a long day and um, things are happening in the house. We're getting there and uh, we now are in a weird situation where we need to wear our, our shoes downstairs and then take them off when we go up the stairs. And it's going to be hard to remember that, but we'll do our best. Is that the mop head? That is the mop head. That is the third floor washing. Wow. Well, you know. The second floor washing one is a lot grosser. Yeah, of course. 
Hi, Kep, you. Kep has not enjoyed that uh, things have smelled like vinegar. But it was, uh, it dissipates. It takes like, it doesn't take too long, but right after we've done it, he's like, mm, gonna go downstairs. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't blame you. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Let's be back tomorrow, shall we?